Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to the MF Kit Build, taking a great kit guitar because we made it and making it awesome. I'm slightly insane, but this is going to be fun. Bear in mind you can win this guitar if you're watching this in July 2018. Enough. What's the build? All right, welcome back to Crimson Guitars. I am really enjoying this uh, MF kit build, taking a great kit guitar and making it awesome. Uh, I nearly said awesomer, I'm not gonna do that. So, at this stage, I have, I have a guitar. The neck is glued in, the front is stained, the back is stained, it's all solid, it's practically playable. Um, but, I need to, I need to oil it, and I'm going to be, uh, I'm gonna be using at this stage uh, high build guitar finishing oil. I'm not. I lie. I lie profusely. Uh, where's the... Aha! Okay. The front only needs high build guitar finishing oil. I'm going to use the penetrating oil for the first couple of coats on the back, which you will see next, and then high build oil after that. While the oil is curing... Can you hear guitars in the background? There's always guitars playing in the background. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, people doing some demos at the moment. Um, I need to make some back plates. And uh, that's all good. We have some maple, which is going to play with the white balance a little bit. All right, so, uh, well, the first thing I need to do is make a template with which to make the back plates while the guitar is curing. The first, first thing I need to do is put a hook in the end of the guitar so that uh, I can hang it up while the oil is curing. So, drill. All right, I need to make a, a quick paper template. And this is just a case of uh, lining up one edge and that'll give me something to cut to. It's pretty damn close. Well, I said pretty close, it's actually perfect. Okay. There we go. Templates made. And uh, essentially, we'll do something like that in a minute. For now, for now, I need to apply oil. Here's to you, here's to me. The best of friends will ever be. This is looking amazing. Now there's a little bit more to be done on the headstock. I, I, I've been debating whether to put the Crimson logo on this or not. It's technically a kit guitar, but then again, it's a kit guitar we made here. Um, and it's also been heavily customized. Uh, I think I am going to do that. I'm gonna, for fun, carve the logo in and maybe fill it in with electric blue something. And uh, then on the back of the headstock as well, uh, I'll put my little uh, motif or rune, shall we say. Um, but that will be carved through the oil finish after the fact. So that doesn't really matter. I'm loving how this black stain has, uh, has come together. So I'm just putting on quite a lot of the penetrating guitar oil at the moment. And uh, I'll stop applying it when it stops penetrating. And then we move on to the high build. We're pretty much there. So I'm going to hang this guitar up for a bit. 
it's very hot today. So roughly eight or 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna rub off all of the excess, uh, all of the excess oil, and then leave it to cure while I make some backpacks. Dispose of your rags carefully. Uh, this is flammable and uh, might catch fire. If you wad it up in a rag and put it in your bin, uh, if you wad it up into a wad and put it in the bin, it could catch fire. So uh, as it dries, it creates an exothermic reaction and this is dangerous. <sighs> I also should have worn gloves. I always forget to wear gloves. Okay. I set up the camera to start marking out the, uh, the back plates onto the, the wood and uh, in the time it took me to do that the oil is cured enough that I really need to uh, rub it back. So uh, here we go. So all the excess oil comes off. This isn't a film finish, you don't rub it back with the wet and dry paper after the fact. You get rid of it as each application is uh, is going on and that builds up a perfect finish. Okay, so there's some there's some pretty nice flaming here. Let us see. Okay, off to the bandsaw. Time for a hand blade. And a vice. End grain. Okay, this is drying. This is drying quite well. I'm gonna rub off one more time, just make sure it's all good and uh, well I need to actually fit the back plates to the guitar otherwise well they're just not gonna fit now are they <laughs> I'm so loving this I could have done this in a slightly better order. In other words, the back plates should have been made earlier. But uh, I also thought that uh, a video that was just about oiling a guitar could be relatively boring. So there we go. I also could be using a spindle sander, for example, or a disc sander or something like that. Uh, that is a machine that I, those are machines that I love and adore and use a lot, but uh, this video series is about people with limited space and uh, limited workshops and a leveling beam is, you know, probably a little bit, a longer winded way of doing it, but just as valid a lot of the time. Well, that one fits perfectly already. The outside needs to be, the out, out, outside line needs to be fixed. As I'm doing this, I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder if I cut some hexagons into the back of this and uh, put, uh, uh, stop. There was uh, a brief period where I was considering doing what uh, one of you suggested, which was uh, uh, make an impregnated resin sheet around uh, some of that uh, stainless steel mesh. But uh, 
I, I just don't, I just don't have the time. The initial coat of penetrating guitar oil has, uh, penetrating guitar finishing oil, has cured now uh, over a couple of hours. It's really warm uh, in here and it's, it's all going off and working much faster than usual. So I am now going to flood the entire instrument front and back with high build guitar finishing oil. It's basically twice the viscosity. Um, as penetrating, and it's got a few other special uh, additives, shall we say. But uh, this is going to bring up a fairly good finish in a very short space of time. And if I had longer, it uh, would be a very, very good finish. Uh, we're at the stage now where <laughs> this build, the I started with a lot of time in hand and uh, it's got slower and slower and slower and I am now only just in front of the videos as they're edited and released and uh, yeah running out of time <laughs> yeah okay so this is basically the same process uh, put a load of oil on leave it to cure for five or ten minutes and rub all of the excess off. As it starts to get tacky, put your finger in and when you start to feel a little bit of resistance, that is, that is when uh, you rub the excess off. Then leave it to cure for a little bit longer, rinse and repeat. I am probably going to get several coats on today. I'm gonna to have to be more careful again. We have sound holes. Ah, look at that. Just look at it. I got a little bit of the finishing oil on the fretboard and this is why this is why I put the uh, uh, a coat of our fretboard restorative on uh, before this stage because uh, uh, the fretboard restorative has stopped the finishing oil from seeping into the fretboard and changing the, 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 the look of it. That's like three minutes. I didn't even need to hang this up. It's, it's going off already. Uh, so, well, that needs to come off and be rubbed down. No stain is coming off after the first coat. Now we're just building up finish. At this temperature, I might actually be able to get more than two or three coats on today. Slightly the wrong thickness, so I'm going to use the masking tape and super glue trick to hold this down while I thickness it with a plane. There we go, that's the grain direction. If you've not seen the masking tape and super glue trick before, then, uh, well, go and check the video for one. I've made a, a couple of videos specifically about this. Essentially, it's a quick and easy way of holding a thin piece of material down that doesn't involve the abomination that is double-sided tape. Uh, it's got a lot of strength laterally, but uh, will pull up very quickly and easily. There we go. So then we just Pick it up like so. No issue there. There's no issue on there. So, 
Same process, because it's a little bit wider, I'm gonna do two strips now. It doesn't actually make any difference really, apart from uh, where the tape is, it's pushed it up, pushes it up just a little bit. So this is going to level that out. Burnish the tape down. This is a tool from BC Woodworks, uh, fantastic handmade tools. It's just a piece of brass um, that he made spe specially for doing this. Strip of glue. The one thing you don't want to do is get the glue over the edges. Accelerator. And then be assorted. Just hold it down. It is good practice <laughs> to get rid of the straggly bits. They tend to get caught in your plane. I need to write inside and outside on each of these faces because I'm about to bevel this and uh, uh, I don't want to mess that one up now, do I? Okay, so that's the inside. I do want a little bevel around the edge and this is inside. Well, this is going to be partially done uh, with a plane. Let's grab a bench, bench hook. So where possible, I'm going to do this with a hand plane. And I'm not making a sharp edge. I'm going to leave that about a mil, uh, or maybe just a little bit less. Uh, sharp edges tend to, tend to break, and uh, it's not. Not as fun. This bench hook was made for me by a fan and it's incredibly appreciated. So it's a most useful tool. It's a very interesting uh, design elements as well. Okay, this corner I should really use, use a file or a rasp or, or a leveling beam for actually. And on to the little one. Feels a little tacky, but not, not much. Okay, before I put any more finish on, Let's have a look at these. Got the coffee, got the finish. This is the second coat of high build, so the third coat of oil on the body at least. This is what it looks like when it's wet. Actually, <laughs> it's actually a pretty impressive finish as is. But uh, in a little while, I'm gonna rub this down and I'm gonna show you the final finish. I'm loving how that black stain has, has worked out here.
I need to remove a little bit of material. It is important to come back after about half an hour to the oil. Uh, sometimes if you've got a particularly porous wood, uh, the pores will suck up oil and then basically spit it out later at the most inopportune time. So this is the finish after, <sighs> I think I said three coats. To be frank, I could put some, uh, some microcrystalline wax on this now and be happy with it. I am, however, I am, however, going to put one more coat of oil on and uh, the wax can go on tomorrow. For now though, for, for now though, fitting the back plates, this, Let's have a look. Yeah, the edges are almost perfect on that. Hmm. Mostly, just a little bit off that corner. Do you know what? I'm not even going to film the application of this next coat of oil. Suffice it to say, I'm going to do exactly what I did in the last two or three takes of this. Wipe it on, wipe it off. Cry a little bit because my hands have got sticky and I forgot to put my gloves on. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, it's gonna look just a little bit shinier and a little bit uh, closer to completion. Do you know what? Do you know what? I've just, I've just realized. Tomorrow, this guitar is going to be strung up. Bridge, tuners, nut. I'm going to make a nut. Strings, LED. I have to put the LED in first before I put the pickups in. I got a long day tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. It's up. It's hanging. It's drying. It's going to cure overnight before I. I think I might be experimenting with our new, uh, our new wax. Not released yet, but uh, yeah, microcrystalline wax. Love the stuff. And uh, we'll see. But uh, anyway, let us change this video up. I'm going to go through and uh, finish these back plates. Back plates of awesomeness. Oh, rear guard. Shielding paint. I'm going to have to shield the cavities tomorrow morning.
Time for some staining. All right, I've gone up to 320 grit paper. So we're going for the same sort of effect that we had on the top of the guitar. And then I'm gonna put some black over the top in the middle. Now what I, in hindsight, what I would have done really, or what I should have done, is put the black in the black on first, let it dry, sanded it back a little bit, and then, ooh, how did that happen? Oh no, I just spilled a little bit. <sighs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> it is too late now. Now the, the inside edges are gonna be painted with uh, shielding paint in a bit. But because these go up to the edge of the, uh, the guitar, uh, there's the chance that somebody will see inside and we want that stained. And now for the black. Same stuff, same process. Only this time, I don't want it, if at all possible, to go over onto the edge. I want these bevels to be pretty clean. Now some of that black is gonna be gone. I'm not gonna bother using the pink. That uh, sort of disappeared mostly. It appears that you can only really layer two of these uh, spirit-based stains. The water-based, people have asked, what's the difference? Uh, Spirit-based tends to be just a little bit more vibrant, for one. Um, and uh, the water-based, however, mixes together very, very well. So you can do some very intricate and interesting bursts um, by hand using water-based stains. Get the excess off. I really should leave this to cure, uh, at least overnight, really, before applying oil. Uh, but I am at this stage in a little bit of a rush. And I also am trying to match uh, fairly close to the body. Uh, and I know, I know that the, the first coat of oil is going to take some of this black off and that's actually gonna match, match the front rather nicely. So. Le oil. This is a, a more industrial strength tissue paper. It's fairly strong. Uh, it's, not, it's not kitchen towel, although, you know, uh, if that's what you can get, Use it. Look at that. Let's do it the quick way. Okay. Well, that's the first coat. I will. I will go through the same process as I did on the guitar in between other bits, i.e. putting hardware on. So in the very next video you will see strings going on, hardware going on. I'm gonna be doing something with an LED. Blue, blue LED, Every, everything in this world can be improved with a blue LED. To prove that you've come right to the end of this video, in the comments below, give me examples of things that could not be improved with a blue LED. And I will try my damnedest to reply with uh, a reason why I disagree with you entirely. Anyway, so there those are, obviously minus a little bit of finish. It's not, sorry, minus finish. It's not the same level of oil. 
but it's the same colors. So that's gonna cure overnight. That is gonna cure overnight. And, uh, and in the morning, this guitar will become a guitar. Thanks for watching. I'm sorry if this was a little bit less scintillating than usual. Every single part of a guitar build cannot be intriguing and gorgeous and interesting to watch. Some parts of it are applying finish and sanding things, and for which I apologize profusely. Thanks for sticking with it there. I appreciate it. Click like, subscribe, and continue being awesome. I will see you guys on the other side. Goodbye.